And I hope my daughters ain't listening to this right now, man. But yeah, boy, I used to be riding the old lady side out doing this song. 91. 91, 92, but I mean, it all ended well for her. I mean, I made her an honest woman. <laughs> yes, sir. I had the song taped. I had that song taped like, I don't know, 10 times on a 90 minute uh, Memorex CD or tape or whatever, man. Uh, and, and we just played that song over and over and over. Monica loved that song. I loved that song, too. And if you remember during that time, that was a smash hit. I don't think Shy ever did anything. The name of the group was Shy. I don't think Shy, S-H-A-I. I don't think they ever did anything outside of uh, of that one album. And they had another track on there as well on that particular album uh, that was a pretty good song. Mm, I can't even remember the name of it right now, but if I heard it, I would know it. But they really didn't do anything after that. They were kind of like the one-hit wonders, man. But that song, that track right there, ooh-wee. Coming right back at you, baby. If I ever fall in love again. Yeah. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at thedougstewartshow.com. Let me read some of these messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com. Coming up in about 15 minutes, a little bit of entertainment talk. Ugh. Denise Milk and Cookies. Ooh. Why are y'all booing Denise Milk and Cookies? I'm looking at Denise Milk and Cookies profile pic in the chat room. Praise his holy name. (laughs) Denise Milk and Cookies in the chat room says, ride her side out, Doug. Yeah, yeah, you better believe it. Ask her. She'll tell you. Ask her, she'll tell you. From Dobby, you get them draws after that, Tiffany. From Clay Killer Cam Davis, 12 play album is a pre- as a uh, is a panty dropper too. Uh, from Sandman, laugh out loud. You write K three thousand. You don't want to see Woodley, and he is delusional. Floyd only considered fighting McGregor because he can promote himself and make him some easy money that he don't even need. Truth be told, McGregor would get destroyed by a lot of boxers. I think I think Conor McGregor would be. Destroyed by 90% of any legitimate boxer because he's not a boxer. Like, it's not even close. Not only would would McGregor probably lose in a boxing match to 90% of decent boxers, but they're talking about him fighting one of the best boxers of all times. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. From Tiffany Sports and Heels, grinding on my side with your bunny, uh, bony ass pelvis. I hated that. Laugh out loud. <laughs> well, I don't got a bony pelvis. Trust me, my pelvis ain't bony. From Grego X Squad, uh, he says there's a meeting in my bedroom. Bedroom, bedroom. Uh, oh, who's that? Uh, that Silk. I think that's Silk. That that line from T Dub Denise. I'm just going to. Lay this right there. Lay what right there? I hope not a penis pick. From Chico to Alpha Ninja, Silk was the ish. You know what? I think Silk is uh, is worthy of a tribute Tuesday. There's a meeting in my bedroom. Bedroom. Yeah. I think we may do Silk next week. Y'all remind me. Shoot me a little email at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com like the day before so that I can remember and have the production team put it all together. Because if you don't remind me the day before, I will forget. <laughs> and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show from the 47 Problem. I think McGregor versus Mayweather fight is a disgrace to the sweet science. I agree. It is a disgrace. 
But it's kind of like that 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 guy that ran the circus. What was his name? Uh, I don't remember his name. Barnum and Bailey, or was it Barnum and Bailey? It wasn't that guy. Maybe it was his cousin or whatever. There's a sucker born every minute. And for the most part, if you spend hard-earned money on this fight, you are what they would call a sucker. Now, I'm not saying that in a personal standpoint because I know a lot of y'all listening to the show will. But from a technical standpoint, that's the definition. (laughs) Right. I will see this fight. A lot of y'all still contend that the fight's not going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. I will see this fight, but I'll be damned if I spend one red cent. (laughs) Ethically and morally and economically, I can't spend money on a fight, period. But ethically and morally, I will not spend one red cent on a Floyd Mayweather farce fight against Conor McGregor. I will not do it. Principle alone. Principle alone, I won't. Now, what I will do is go to some friend's fight party who's purchased a fight, and I will take a six-pack of beer. (laughs) That's the extent of it. That's the extent of it, okay? Uh, That's it. I will take a six-pack. I might even take a case. I might even take a case. But in no way, in no way will I spend money directly to to said pay-per-view company for this fight. It's just the principle of the matter. No way. From Uncle Mike, I am a sucker. I will pay to see people throw uh to see people throw hands. And technically what I'm doing if I take a 12 pack over there or or a case over there to the fight party, I am technically playing for it. So I get that. I understand. But well, once again, to directly pay whatever cable company you know, whatever pay-per-view company for this fight, I just I just can't do it. I just can't see myself doing that. Uh, from Jay Fish to Microwave, I just want to see McGregor get punched in the face a lot. And trust me, that will happen. Like, I, once again, I talked about this a couple of days ago. I envision Floyd just really toying around, letting the dude get tired, you know, and blocking 90% of his crazy girl-like punches because that's what it's going to be like. Like half the <laughs> – I mean, let's be honest. He's not a boxer. And 90 to 90% of the time, you see dudes fighting on the street that have no boxing experience, no technical background in boxing. Half of their punches look like a girl's throwing them. So I expect half of Conor McGregor's punches to look like the punches from a girl. And I expect Floyd just to stay out of the way and just avoid a haymaker, you know, miracle punch. You know, let McGregor get tired, dead tired after three, four rounds and just tee off on him. Just use him as target practice for two or three rounds until he finally just says, all right, I'm tired of this. I'm going to go ahead and knock this guy out. That's what will happen. I, I believe that's what will happen. That's the most likely outcome of a McGregor-Floyd Mayweather fight. We're going to talk about it later as well. <laughs> or why I think it's going to happen. Uh, from LLK 3000 S way, folk, you know damn well Periscope, uh, Periscope is for the free. I don't know why everybody's so high on Facebook Live. Governor Access at its best, GOV Access at its best. Perry, you are in and out. And I, I, I would assume it's the equivalent. I've seen free things on Periscope before. I just mentioned how this past weekend I watched Roy Jones fight on Facebook Live. So it don't matter. But but on something like this, I, I don't want to see it. And I guess I could project it onto uh, my Apple TV. You know that you're able to do that with your Apple phone, right? If you have Apple TV, uh, there's a function where you can actually project it from any video or whatever, like YouTube that you're watching on your Apple phone. You can project it onto your Apple TV, onto your screen. So I guess technically I could do that with Periscope or Facebook Live, but nah, I want to go to a fight party. You know, I want to go to a place where they got snacks and they got brew. The ambiance of the whole thing. Right, so I want the whole ambiance of the whole thing. I want the ambiance of a fight party. And so I, I won't do it on Periscope or Facebook Live, but I will be at somebody's, you know, fight party and watching Floyd Mayweather Jr. just totally beat the hell out of Conor McGregor 
disrespecting the great sport of boxing. You don't go in nobody else's sport and, and talk trash when you ain't got no experience in it. It's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful for an MMA guy to think that he's just going to waltz into a ring one of the greatest of all times and put up any competition. That shit ain't going to happen. But, but, but by the time the fight does come around, <laughs> you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, everybody in America is going to believe Conor McGregor's got a chance. From Chuchi, what time of night do you periscope, Mocha? Mocha be periscoping? I haven't periscoped in a while. You know what? Maybe I'll do that at some point today. So, Stewies, if you're listening to this show, go to Periscope and follow me on Periscope. I believe it's Doug, two live Stewies, or just look up Doug Stewart. And maybe tonight at some point, later on this evening at some point, I got to go to a meeting later tonight. But maybe some point today, man, we'll jump on Periscope for old time's sake. I hadn't done it. I know it. Four or five months, maybe even more than that. And I used to do it a lot um in relative terms but i haven't done it in a while like one platform comes out and totally replaces another platform i was so high on periscope and you know then facebook live came out man and i just stopped using periscope from sydney jackson doug a true ninja he wants to watch the fight on someone else's dime, eat up all this snack shit up the bathroom and leave. No! Now listen. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not only do I throw fight parties sometimes every once in a while, and I kind of like pay it forward. You understand what I'm saying? I'll have a fight party, a viewing party or whatever at my house, and, and, and I'll invite people over, and I don't ask them to, you know, for no money, anything like that. I'll take them, bring in their brew or you know, some wings or something like that. So I paid forward. And not only that, when I go to fight parties, I take something with me. I never come to a party empty-handed. So I'll take a, a six-pack or a, a, a case or whatever. And here's the thing about it. When I leave, if they are leftover beers, I don't take them with me. That's the difference. You ever see a ninja bring something to a party? And when he leave, he's trying to gather all of the remainder and take it with him. Don't do that. Don't be that devil. Uh, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. If you bring something to a party, leave it. That that is that is the possession of the house at that point on. So don't bring a, a, a case of beer and there's ten beers left and you try to gather it up and take it with you when you leave. No. That's breaking a man law. Period. <laughs> That's breaking a man law if you take your damn beer back with you. Don't do that. No. And I'd never do that. There's certain rules to this man shit, I'm telling you. All right, we get back from the break. A little entertainment to talk about. I think I have another song for my list of my top five favorite songs of all times as well. I think we have another one. Another slow song. This is another another slow song. When we get back, we'll do that. Don't go away. The Doug Stewart Show. Schemes of getting rich, controlling, holding, bank rolling and such. From the young age of nine, shorty had enough. Only scenes in his eyes was corrupt. 
This is how you get what you want, what you need. Top of the line for shorty, blooming Project C. Got the smart for the school, but love the street living. Excited is my fame division. Napoleon claimed the name, played the part, maintained the heart, knew the game. Street raised to stay smart. Shorty made it all for me, crafted 16. Do the math, added in dog years. That was too well advanced for all his average peers, but had a team.